The Future of Facebook Open Foresight Project collected web interviews with 30 of the world's leading tech thinkers across categories spanning society, technology, economics, environment, and politics. These are seven core visions that emerged during the process. Facebook will become a uh, more pervasive part of the network uh, fabric, network fabric of our lives from being a provider of voice and video services to being the place that we share our memories, thoughts, and dreams, um, to being uh, the venue for our interactions with government citizens and businesses. Um, it'll be something that follows us in a lot of different places um, where uh, a like um, become something that's uh, nearly as valuable as a hyperlink and less uh, current trans reverse. By 2015, I think the Facebook experience is a series of tabs for everything in your life. You can search there, you can find there, you can buy there, you can sell there, you can communicate there, you can find online dating there, you can manage your relationships there. It's, um, I think that's really it's the dashboard for life. I think they'll get there. So I think increasingly, uh, you know, um, Facebook will will take on that 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 role of the sort of the, the most public persona that you have, the one that's the most bland and palatable, and one that's unlikely to draw any uh, ill will from any quarter. Uh, the most public and bland personality a person could put forward, like putting it on like a, a business suit, uh, and the the other aspects of the person's interests and character, and some that might be or parochial, like a particular political party or something that might be questionable or not perceived as professional, would be unlikely to be done in Facebook. It'd be divided up in a dozen of other dozen other apps. And the young people will be defecting, so this person will be 45 or 50, the average person, and won't be an 18-year-old. Facebook peaking and, and withering. Um, it'll either die of its own accord because people uh, um, get bored or tired or they start to feel it's more of a, a exhausting thing than it is uh, uh, an energizing thing. And once people start to experience Facebook as the man, or once we have an American society that rather than its youth culture trying desperately to get on American Idol. The youth culture is going to be more about getting beyond American Idol. You'll see people leaving uh, a service that's about sales. You know, they, they won't see the mall, you know, as the coolest place to be. And that's just a matter of time. That's just a cycle. ultimately going to peak uh, in terms of its online capacity, in terms of, of how many users it can draw in. Um, it's going to, to probably peak in terms of how complex and contextual uh, its online uh, communication sort of you know value is going to be. Uh, so as, as fast as it can extend itself into the offline world in terms of physical commerce, um, location technology, um, doing something with mobile more than just having it as a, as a, a, a you know, a miniature of, of the online Facebook um, and getting into completely different lines of business and sort of facets of, of consumer lifestyle uh, are going to be critical to its survival. Uh, otherwise, it will just end up being another AOL peaking at several hundred million users um, and ultimately being replaced by the next big thing.
think that the future lies in the creation of thriving small businesses and Facebook doesn't really offer a lot of opportunities to do that. If I were running Facebook, I would find a way to imbue it with a sense of entrepreneurialism and create a mixed media, mixed reality events that tie the physical world back to the platform in some way that enables them to generate revenue from their advertisers and from you know, the way people use the platform. The ability for humans to, to join in groups and understand and think as groups is one of the greatest forces that shapes us historically, and, and Facebook could enable that. Facebook could connect us to other people, could reduce the barriers between our, our minds, uh, and actually help us function more collectively uh, in groups, maybe even you know, something towards uh, what I like to think of as group minds, collective consciousness, or, or what people may call the global brain. You know, to the extent that it connects us and helps us see and understand and empathize with what other people are experiencing, um, it will actually bring us closer together and, and start to create a kind of smarter human superorganism, which could be a good thing for the world. Since this project began, Facebook has continued its rapid global expansion, structurally shifted to timeline, fought off the rise of Google+, broadened its experimentation with credits, been sued for allegedly grabbing mobile users' address book data, has been increasingly utilized by governments for surveillance, and is now preparing for a $100 billion IPO. As Facebook approaches 1 billion users, its socioeconomic influence is clearly on the rise, and understanding the nature of the world's most significant social network is more important now than ever. So we urge you, the public, to continue asking questions and looking for answers about the intentions and impact of Facebook and other emergent social structures. The open foresight methodology we've utilized during this process is open source and can be applied to any future topic. Let's get smarter at building visions of our increasingly complex world together. Thank you.